Hello, it's Julian, and in this video, we're going to be exploring semantic HTML and ARIA to help bring context to your web pages. This video is going to be a brief overview of the ideas behind semantic HTML and ARIA, but if you want us to go deeper, do let us know in the comments below. We spoke a little in the last video about interactions and context. In this video, we're going to go deeper and look at how websites are built to ensure accessibility when it comes to users accessing these sites through assistive technology, such as screen readers. In our previous video, Designing with Accessibility in Mind Universal Design Principles, we spoke about designing something that was as universal to use as possible. And we mentioned Don Norman's book, The Design of Everyday Things. I'll pop a link to that video um, up here. In that video, we touched on the idea of how an object could tell you what its function was, or more accurately, how it should be used through its design. We mentioned the scenario of opening a door, where there's a flat plate on one side of the door, which indicates you can push it to open. And then on the other side of the door, there's a handle, which is an invitation for you to pull the door open. Notice with many of these doors, the interaction will also be backed up with text which is exactly what we have spoken about with regards to links, icons, and buttons in our last video. These design cues are also known as affordances, and believe it or not, can exist within the code of every website. As we have spoken before, a website is built through a series of frames or boxes that are positioned with code to hold content such as text, image, embeds, and buttons. These boxes are known as divs, and have been around since 1997 with the introduction of HTML4. So these went some way into breaking pages down into divisions, but if I was to access or read the website with a screen reader, the page is still quite flat and doesn't really give me a sense of the page content and doesn't really give me a sense of the shape and hierarchy of that content. So this is where semantic HTML comes in, which was introduced with HTML5. These are a set of additional names for divs and by using these when building sites, we're able to give additional context to a page for that user. So if we have a look at the example on the screen, before we had a series of divs that really didn't explain the content they were likely to house. This time we're going to change the names of these to help explain the page. The first part we're going to define is the top of the page. We're going to call this the header because it's at the head or top of the page. And within this, we're going to add a little more context to the next div, which we're going to change to nav. So now we have made the top part far more descriptive, and we understand the likely content and functionality we're likely to find in that area. So from here, we're gonna move down the page, and we're gonna separate the header from the next block of divs by contextualizing this as a section. This identifies the area as a new section of content and within this section, we're going to bring further context, just like we did with the nav box. This time, we're going to change the next div to an article tag. So we're saying here that within this section, there's going to be an independent article. Finally, as we move down, we'll finish off the page by providing it with a footer block. So the page is now built, and we've gone from a fairly hard to understand page to one which from the very beginning provides the user with a richer understanding of the likely content it will have. I hope you're enjoying the accessibility series of videos. If you are, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and do consider subscribing. And let us know what you'd like to see us make videos of in the future. Now there are a load of different tags and ways of doing tags on a page. I'll put a link to an article which runs through this in a little more depth in the description below. But I hear you say that sh surely we can make sites even better and easier to understand. And you're right, we can help the user even further by providing even more context by using ARIA. So what is ARIA? Well, ARIA stands for Accessible Rich Internet Applications. And in simple terms, it's a set of additional information we can add to a tag to provide richer context for users. By doing so, users can understand what and how to interact with. And just like semantic HTML, it opens access of your website to as wide a group of users as possible. So an example of ARIA being built into a page might look something like a semantic element, such as a select tag. The select tag indicates that there is something to select. Then the ARIA provides further information around this selection. So if we think about a dropdown, we first of all want to understand the nature or subject matter of that dropdown. We want to understand if it's open or closed. We then want to understand 
the values or the list of things that we can select from. And then finally, we want to understand if we have selected anything or if there is something already selected, such as default. The thing we have to be aware of when it comes to ARIA is that it needs to be fully done or not at all. Often incomplete or wrong ARIA can actually have the opposite effect of what we're trying to work toward. It can make pages less accessible for the users. So in summary, Semantic HTML provides a way for people using assistive technology to understand pages in a deeper way. ARIA provides users even more contextual information about pages and more specifically, how they can interact with elements on those pages. And then finally, if using ARIA, Make sure you use it correctly. No ARIA is better than bad ARIA. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next video.